For all you builders out there, I got something for you. It's called Scripto, and it's a new smart contracts language that really changes the game. It's easy to understand, it's safe, it's reusable, and honestly, it just doesn't have most of the limitations of its predecessors. That's because the Radix team took a long, hard look at existing frameworks. They were like, dude, we can build something better. That's how Scripto was born, and today, I'm gonna share with you everything you gotta know. What it is, why you should care, how it's different, and why you should go play around with it and whip up some dApps. Just FYI, this is gonna be a little more technical than usual, because I'll be speaking to builders and less to general investors. But if you're still interested, then strap in my friend and let's roll the intro. Let's start at the very top with what exactly is wrong with existing smart contracts. Well, the Radix team asked that same question when they noticed a lot of developers dipping their toes into DeFi but deciding not to go any further. So they had a ton of conversations and concluded that four main things were holding back developers. First is that there's a really high learning curve for existing languages like Solidity. I mean, sure, you could just copy a smart contract, change a few variables, and then launch it. But to actually get to a point where you know what's going on and can build advanced dApps, that's a whole nother story. The second hurdle is that it's pretty difficult to build safe dApps. It seems like every other week we hear of yet another million dollar hack or exploit. But it's not fair to just blame the devs. The underlying framework or paradigm could be improved so that devs don't have to write these unwieldy dApps full of interconnected smart contracts that are impossible to analyze. The third hurdle is that smart contracts need to be more usable. Having everything open source on the blockchain is a great part of the crypto world, but you still need to copy the code off the ledger and redeploy it. It would be even better if reusability was built into the platform so you can do things like launch a token without having to write new code at all. And finally, the fourth hurdle is that composability takes the back seat in many platforms out there. Like many blockchain networks sacrifice composability for scalability. But if we really want DeFi to be money Legos, where we build on top of existing components to create even more powerful apps, then composability must be a top priority. Now DeFi and crypto have come a long way, even with those hurdles in place. But imagine how much bigger our industry would be if the development experience was better and more people were building and innovating. Well, that's what Radix wants. And that's why they built their Radix engine and Scripto language for smart contracts. Their whole goal is to reduce your time to first successful dApp as much as possible. In terms of the Radix engine, it's quote, an asset-oriented smart contract environment. The key word to focus on here is asset, and that's just like tokens, for example. But to understand why that's even notable, we have to look at Uniswap, probably the most popular dApp ever built. If you think about Uniswap on a high level, we're just trading token A for token B, right? Conceptually, it should be simple like we see in this diagram that Radix made. So we send token A to the Uniswap smart contract, they put that in their token A pool, and then they take from their token B pool and then send that to us. It should be that straightforward, but actually, it's not. This is what a simple token swap looks like in Uniswap land. You got token approvals, balance checks, and a bunch of transactions and messages flowing between the different smart contracts. A big reason why all that is needed is because there's no inherent notion of a token in Ethereum. So token A and token B are just separate ERC-20 smart contracts that each hold a list of balances. The Radix blog explains, quote, we're never really sending tokens around. We're just sending messages to the methods of various smart contracts. The trader doesn't actually hold tokens in their account. They simply have balances listed in those smart contracts associated with their private key. Also, in terms of those pesky token approvals that we always do, it's because the Uniswap smart contract is actually sending tokens for us. So we're not even doing those transactions ourselves. These are just two tiny pieces of the puzzle. But the point here is that a ton of complexity is going on, even for something as simple as a Uniswap trade. The Radix team took one look at this and they're like, no way. They want a framework that lets you build Uniswap the simple and intuitive way instead. That's why the Radix engine was designed with the concept of an asset front and center. In their environment, tokens are treated like physical objects that are moved around from account to account. And accounts are more like vaults that hold the tokens you control. This is in stark contrast to the old approach where you send a message to a separate smart contract to update your token balance on their internal list. So to implement their physical object type of behavior, Radix uses a finite state machine model for their tokens or assets. Here's a really simple diagram that portrays tokens moving between vaults with the behavior dictated by an FSM. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the crux of the Radix approach. Assets are a global feature on their platform, and actions such as sending, putting, or taking are also built in rather than simulated by passing messages between smart contracts. Now this is all great, but so far we've only been talking about their smart contract environment. We also need a smart contract language to take advantage of the Radix engine's unique features. And hence, Scripto was born. To learn Scripto, you only need to know the basics of Rust, which is a super popular language in and of itself. The idea with Scripto is to let builders focus on writing business logic while leaning on the Radix engine to do all the asset handling that we talked about earlier. Let's break down the most important parts of Scripto to give you an idea of how much easier it is to build with. So for tokens or other assets, they are considered resources in Scripto. And to create a token, you can use the built-in Scripto function and specify the parameters you want. Like let's say we're creating a token called MyCoin and we want 1 million of them. So we pass the number of tokens plus the name into the resource creation function and it returns to us 1 million my coins. Those are actually first put into a bucket, which is like a temporary container. Because remember, Radix is designing these assets to act like physical objects. And then the bucket immediately puts your coins where you told it to, such as a vault for long-term storage. Here's a simple diagram that shows this token creation process, and it's super simple. It can be done with a couple lines of code. Now, that's everything you gotta know about resources. But what about smart contract logic? Well, in Scripto, smart contracts are actually called components. They don't just hold data like in other frameworks, they actually hold vaults, which have the resources that we just talked about. In fact, every vault is owned by some smart contract component, and each component can hold multiple vaults. So each component's code defines the data it holds, the vault it has, and also the methods that other components can use to interact with them. If that sounds confusing, here is a great diagram that paints a better picture. You have a smart contract component A, and it holds 25 my coins in a vault, and it also has two methods that can be called. By the way, do you notice that little blueprint A text next to the component A name? Well, blueprints are like templates that's deployed on the Radix network, and you can create components from them. So the scripto code is actually within the blueprint, but the component's actual state, like the resources it holds and the data, that belongs to the specific component. Once you instantiate a component from a blueprint, it's then active on the network and can be interacted with. Here's a great diagram showing that you can call the new function on the blueprint and it creates a component for you. This way of doing things really increases the reusability of code across the network. Now in terms of interacting with these components or smart contracts, it's also a bit different in scripto land. Remember those methods that allow you to interact with a component? Well, they can actually directly accept resources themselves because when we pass along a resource to a component, we're actually transferring ownership of the tokens we sent to the component itself. Caller or initiator no longer has access to that bucket of tokens. It's been transferred away and the component can now put the resources into a vault or some other bucket. This results in a much simpler and safer way of handling assets because it involves less smart contracts, less calls, and just overall less room for error this way. But let's take a step back, because this whole time we've been talking about resources and components and how they all interact. But what about just regular transactions that us end users send to each other or that we send to components to kick things off? What do those look like? Well, it's pretty simple because transactions are also asset oriented. As an end user, we have accounts that look like this diagram. Accounts are actually just special types of components or smart contracts. You see Alice's account has two vaults with different coins. It also has withdraw and deposit methods. So if Alice wants to send her coins to her friend Bob, she would call the withdraw method, specify the coin and the amount, and then that would get put into a temporary bucket, which is past Bob's deposit method. This is the pseudo syntax of the transactions, but here's what the higher level flow of the action looks like. But I think what's really useful is this new feature called the transaction manifest. That lets you specify line by line the steps of the transaction so you can chain together multiple calls to different components all in one go. And if any of those steps fail, then the whole thing gets reverted. That's super powerful and that's why Radix always preaches that we gotta have atomic composability in order to build DeFi apps. So with everything we now understand about resources, components, transactions, and accounts, let's take a fresh look at the Uniswap example we talked about earlier. Because with the Radix engine and Scripto, this is what a simple swap would look like. Notice how everything kicks off with the transaction on the very left? 
It calls the withdraw method on Alice's account, passes a bucket of her token A to the trade method of RattySwap, and then they put that into their own token A vault and take out token B and pass that to the deposit method of Alice's account. Boom, swap complete, and the whole process was so simple. So if you're building a DEX in Radix land, you pretty much only have to write the code for the trade method to determine the exchange rate between token A and token B. Everything else is using the existing take and put functions on buckets and vaults. And by the way, for that transaction we saw on the left hand side of the diagram, this is what some pseudo syntax would look like for it. Once again, just three really simple calls and it keeps things safe, flexible, and composable. All right, so if you're itching to play around with Scripto by now, here's how you can get started. Just keep in mind that right now, Scripto and the Radix engine are in early access or beta mode. So you can already write DeFi apps using Scripto, but you currently cannot launch it on the mainnet. Instead, they have a simulator that you can run on your local environment, and it will let you push around transactions and interact with accounts, components, resources, etc. There's an open source Scripto GitHub repo that you can work with, and it includes a Rust cargo file with some Scripto libraries, some command line tools, and some initial documentation as well. You can get started now, and when their Babylon release happens in Q4 of this year, that's when you'll be able to deploy on the mainnet and everything will be live. So if you're a DeFi builder or enthusiast and want to play around with Scripto, go check out my links below. I'll leave you a developer page with a lot of great resources and also a Telegram channel just for Radix devs to help each other out. I'll see you on the next one and cheers!